Praise God. Good morning, uh, good afternoon from wherever you're watching us. This is the Minister's Lounge, a place where we encourage one another to continue serving God and stirring up each other and to good works. Given that Ephesians chapter number 2 verse number 9 is clear, we have been delivered for a purpose. And today, I am so privileged. I know in this lounge, I've been able to host different people, my daughter, other youngsters, uh, kids that we've spoken about, the PKs. And today, I'm privileged to host my very own son, Timias Mulinge, and we are in for a great time. I want us to pray before I ask him to say hi to us, and we will continue. Our God and our Father, we thank you. As we share our lives, may it be an encouragement to our viewers, God. Lord, we thank you for the things that you have done in our lives and Tim's life. And as we share those testimonies, dear God, that thy faithfulness, you who is a covenant-keeping God, we pray that someone's heart will be encouraged. A pastor will be encouraged somewhere and a PK will be stirred up. And a young person also will be encouraged, dear God. We thank you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. I am so excited. I don't want to take a lot of time. I'm also expectant to hear more from Tim. He talks very less on one-on-one, -on -one, but I know I get the best of him when we are on camera. So I am also expectant. So Tim, can you say hi to the people? Hello, my name is Timias Mulenge. I'm absolutely happy to be here today. I'm a very big fan of this platform and um, I love the impact that it has on the people. So I'm definitely glad to be a part of this today. Karibu sana, karibu sana. Thank I know you. he was, uh, he didn't expect me to say that, but I know he talks very less on one-on-one, -on -one, but give him the mic, then you will know who Timias Mulenge is. So thank you so much. Uh, talk to us. I know we have come from a very hard season, the pandemic, mm -hmm. and you were locked down in the U.S., left alone on campus. What was your experience like? Because we have seen young people pull out some different kind of uh, behavior and characters during this time and period. So how was your experience? I had a very interesting experience for about 12 to 14 months when the whole country was shut down. That was a reorienting experience for me. It's a time where I got to discover myself and rediscover some of the aspects of my life. It was almost like therapy where I learned to be comfortable with myself, learned to be comfortable by myself, and learned to just understand who Timias Mulinge really is. And so, yeah. Time for reorganization. And what is it that kept you on track? Because you've seen a lot of young people lose their track during that period. I think it's very important to have the right foundation. When the foundation is right, nothing can really knock you off guard. The hits will be there, but it's not guaranteed to take you down. And so a good foundation is important. I thank God for wonderful parents who fought to instill that into my sister and I at a very, very young age, which has helped us maneuver our way through the different stages of life. Foundations coming out in there, and we are talking to parents, particularly parents who are youngsters in the house, your children are still below 10. Foundations are very important, and mm -hmm. remember, we grow our children for the world, not right. for heaven. So don't grow your children for heaven and church only. Grow them for the world because then when the central foundations are right, they will be able to stand the test of time. So Tim, talk to us. Being born in a pastor's family, how was your experience as a young boy? The life of a pastor's child is very interesting. It has its own ups and downs. Uh -huh. It comes with a lot of responsibilities. That's all I can say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So what are these responsibilities that comes along with being born in a pastor's family? Or how does it feel like to be born in a pastor's family? It's definitely a privilege to be born in a pastor's family. Mm -hmm. It goes without saying that the spiritual foundation is one of the things that you highly benefit right. from, which is very important in the upbringing of any young person. It's definitely important to be founded mm. in Christ. The connections is another thing to benefit from. Oh my goodness, yes. Yeah, the <laughs> pastors are widely connected. Right. Pastors, doctors, lawyers, they all do the same thing of saving the common citizen from sometimes yes. themselves. And so, <laughs> <laughs> and so um, the connections that my parents have had 
um, I personally have been able to greatly benefit from right. connecting you to people who have different perspectives, have different, are from different walks of life. Mm. That helps you be exposed and have an open mind towards a lot of things. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of benefits. Being a pastor's child is definitely a true blessing. That has come out very clearly. The privilege of connections, the privilege of spiritual foundations, yeah. the privilege of eating nice food at the high table. <laughs> that can be debated upon. <laughs> Depending on where you are pastoring, right? De not really. Uh, Being a pastor's child also puts you at the spotlight. Okay. It puts you at the spotlight mm -hmm. where you are a point of reference for other children. Okay. By that I mean, there's this saying that I heard most of the time growing up, uh, a parent telling another child, which puts a lot of pressure on the pastor's <laughs> child. I can imagine. And so even when it comes to, let's say eating at the high table, Yes. what if the child doesn't want to eat at the high, high table, table, you see? So, <laughs> Yeah, it can be debated It upon. can be debatable, depending on the personalities, of course, you know, there are those ones who want to be at the high table, yeah. the others who would want to be behind the scenes there, and mm. I think I like what Tim is bringing out. My other concern is, uh, when you were growing up, mm. did you feel like it was too much pressure to become a reference point? Oh. Because I'm imagining you are under normal development as a child, mm. and people are referring you for things that you don't even know and then you are not the pastor it is your father and your mother who are into these things oh uh, yes there was a lot of pressure in it there's the expectation that being that your father and your mother are pastors that you're the next in line <laughs> uh, which if i could speak for all pastors children right it's not the desire of most <laughs> it's not the desire of do you feel like most have been pushed to become I can see that most have been close to become <laughs> pastors. And yeah, there's definitely that pressure. Um, there's a certain script that I feel like pastors' children are expected to follow. There are some certain things that pastors' children are expected to do, certain things that, certain places that pastors' children are supposed to be and are not supposed to be. Right. So it's, you have a life within high walls. You have a life within yeah. high walls. That has come out so powerfully. Tim, it reminds me, I think at the age of either 10 there, 12 there, you actually relaxed your hair. <laughs> and there was a lot of politics in church where many mothers were saying that if that is the pastor's child, we would rather leave the church. And of course, most of them left because as a pastor's family, we have been very protective. Listen to me, pastors. We've been very protective about our children and we didn't allow anybody and everybody to discipline our children or even give them their own opinion. We had made it as a policy in the church that if you have any concern about our children, then you need to see me or see the father so that we don't confuse them on where to get directions from. It reminds me, it was a bit ish-ish here. You have actually relaxed your hair and people are uncomfortable. Share with us those uncomfortable moments of your childhood as a pastor's child. <laughs> Wow. You know, many people think that we are a perfect family, but they don't know our background. And for us to be a blessing to you, we can only be vulnerable so that you know that God is faithful along the journey of this life. Yeah. There were definitely a lot of uncomfortable scenarios. Mm -hmm. The picture you painted, the whole relaxing thing. I was in the middle of my growing and trying to find myself as a child, first of all, and then secondly, as a pastor's child. And so those definitely things that you can do and things that you can't do. Other like challenges were being a pastor, your house is open to everyone. <laughs> and sometimes as an introvert, I would say you like your space. Yes. And so having people after service on Monday, on Tuesday, Bible studies at your place on, on a Wednesday, Thursday, sometimes they come for Kesha or prayer on Friday. In the house. In the house. Yeah. And all this is happening in, you know, a place <laughs> where you find comfort, a place where you can be yourself. Right. It started to feel like church was at home. Church was 
mm-hmm. and so that was really challenging for me as a child i remember one time i literally told my mom kuna venye staki wageni kwa nyumba staki wa shirika wewe cuz at a point i was like you're the pastors i am the child of the pastors yes, like, yes. this burden is yours uh, your, it's your burden and you're stretching it in the house yeah. in my safe space mm-hmm. yeah right there's just that your life and your parents life become one to serve the people and so did you at any one point feel sacrificed as we served the people yeah huh? yeah <laughs> wow a lot a lot uh, a lot okay there are certain times where you need your parent to be present for something let's say a soccer game or you are doing a presentation in school or you just having any event and this is something i have seen with also other pastors kids who are my friends um when you have those activities as a child that you you know you need a family support sometimes your parents are not available to be there because they have prayer meeting or they have bible study or they have someone that they're counseling or they they just the church events that happen i thank god that mom definitely made time for my sister and i when we were growing up mm. and she put us up as a priority but i feel like that's one thing that a lot of pastors kids face you know wow so. wow if you are to talk to pastors i know there are young pastors that are coming up as young pastors and uh, they are watching us for the sake of what you have gone through as a pk mm-hmm. what would be your advice to them <laughs> 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 really do pastors have people who can speak to them right. so this is always a good platform where we talk to pastor what are our feelings and we allow them to benefit the ones who feel they can apply it in their lives that's okay but i know it helps someone i love this conversation <laughs> these are uh, interesting <laughs> interesting conversations we're having <laughs> one thing that i would say that a lot of pastors kid would love to benefit from yes is consistency The man or the woman that we wow. see every Sunday mm. standing and talking to the people mm-hmm. we want to see that same person at home. Wow. Well said. Well said. That statement is fully loaded. There is need pastors and pastors wives that they may be consistency in our own lives. Mm. The passion we show out there for the people can the same passion be transferred to our children at home. And I know I spoke the other time on balancing ministry and family and this is one thing that I took as a principle for myself that if I am dying for my world my children are the world and if I have a passion for the people of God out there my children are people that I am responsible of and I am a steward to their lives and I'll give an account at the judgment seat and believe you me I was that candid I took 5 to 7 years to stay at home until my children were grown to the age of 18 paka timu akafika mahali i was suffocating him i was so much <laughs> remember that one morning i woke to make breakfast for tim and he said mom i don't want you to make breakfast for me anymore this is the last time i'm taking your breakfast i want to make my own breakfast and can you imagine do you remember that yes i do, <laughs> yes, I do. and he reached a point and said The last thing I want to see in the morning is you. So can you sleep? <laughs> Yet he actually told me, "Can can you take time with your husband in the morning and, and allow me to wake up in the morning?" And that's how fed up he was <laughs> because of my being of uh, involved in his life. But you know what? I know wherever he is, he now know <laughs> that is actually a, a great treasure and many children are actually missing that. I want to encourage pastors wives and pastors yani uwe mwingi tu kwa watoto wako wakushibe so that even if they get married you will not interfere with their marriages because of the gaps that you created when they are gone for Maureen and Tim let me tell you I'm spending the best of my time so that when these guys get married I will allow them to be with their family so if you are watching us today I want you to make a decision that you will honor your family you will give time for your children you will sacrifice ministry for the purpose of your children I remember the times that I didn't go to church and uh, they didn't want to go to church and we say let's stay at home and they could be so excited mom you're staying at home you're staying at home you know it's an exciting thing let me tell you 
The world is not the church, and the church is not the world. When those two distinctions are made, they are able to make the best out of each with a balance that causes them to remain focused. Yes, Steve. Actually, on the, when you just said that last statement, it reminded me of something else. Yes. Uh, that can be good for the parents. Yes. Regardless of your profession, maybe a pastor, maybe a, an architect, a businessman, or a doctor, there is a great need to distinguish between when you need to be that profession for your child versus when you need to be a father and a friend or a mother and a friend. Okay. Sometimes pastors mistake their children for members. <laughs> if I can say that. Oh my goodness, yes. Yeah, na tuchiwa kama tu washirika. So, um, why are you not honoring me? Yeah. <laughs> you know the end, you're, you're at home, you're wondering, somebody's asking for honor at home. <laughs> and so yeah there, there needs to be that there's when we need a pastor there's when we need a friend there's when we need a father there are those hats that need to you know be switched on and there's a balance a good equilibrium that should be brought so are you them. saying are you saying there is time that the pastors need in their homes to keep away the bible and face life yes yes i'm a firm believer that this, this is probably going to be contradictory, but I'm a firm believer that there are some things that are spiritual uh -huh. and there are some things that you just need to combat with one-on-one. -on -one. I like that. There are things that are not everything, not everything is, is spiritual. Very true. Not yeah. everything is spiritual. Praise God. And that's very, it's a very powerful statement. Pastors, not everything is spiritual. So don't spiritualize everything. And not everything needs prayer. That may look like a contradictory too. Yeah. There are things that you need to engage with one another. And that's why the Bible says that uh, confess your sins one to another so that you may be healed. So we need to stop hiding in that spiritual cocoon of, of behaving like uh, we are already in heaven and we are here. We are here on earth. Yeah. And what we are talking about parents is that we need to apply something we call compartmentalization so that if you are a pastor, in a Shia church, then you are a father, you are a mother. We need to work on being friends with our children. We need to deal with the naturals as the natural and then the spiritual when everything is put in its own place. Remember, we are not refuting that the foundation is spiritual, but the actualization and the living is integrated in a human body where we need to be more practical than spiritual. Now, tip. People look at you and they view at you as a great success. When they hear your success story, when they hear what the Lord has done in your life, they look at you as a very successful man. Mm -hmm. But that may not be the experience maybe you experience privately. Would you want to share with us and with the young people that could be watching you out there, what are the sacrifices that you had to make for you to be where you are? Definitely nothing comes easy. Everything comes with the right amount of effort that you give to it. And uh, with that, it calls for a lot. It calls for a lot of sacrifice. One of the things that I've had to majorly sacrifice is a lot of um, external pleasures. Everything is good, but then not everything is necessary for that specific moment in time. And therefore, having good, like having good vision and focus on what you're planning to do or what you've set your eyes to do and to complete that task goes a whole mile a lot and that has helped me achieve the things I've been able to achieve and take on big goals and small goals and you know hit those targets and so yeah I've definitely had to give up a lot of fun times good times that a lot of young people enjoy. One good thing that I experienced growing up was that my father always surrounded me with his network, the people that he did business with, the people that he had very, you know, intellectual conversations with. And so with being surrounded by those people, I was able to develop or to grow in that mindset a thinker, an innovative person, business oriented, which are skills that are necessary, I feel like, to the people in our age today. 
And so that's, <laughs> I had to sacrifice a lot of childhood pleasures and stuff, which are important, mm. but it's also important to, you know, have that visionary thinking and see how um, everything that you do plays um, in plan with your future. That reminds me of Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 23, 24 down there, where the Bible is saying that Moses had to give up the passing pleasure of this world because he was looking forward for a reward. And what we are saying to the young people, what Tim is saying to the young people that there is need to sacrifice the pleasures of this life. At that age, 17, 18 to 25 around there, is a time when young people really destroy their young 20s. And you know, if you destroy your early 20s, you either break or make your life. And what we have come to discover is that Tim is talking to us that we need to sacrifice the pleasures, the parting kind of life, the relational kind of life where everyone is having a girlfriend here and there. We need to sacrifice those things for the purposes of our own personal, emotional, behavioral, and career development. The other thing that is coming out there, and this is to us as parents, exposure, exposure. Tim has been able to clearly state that the fathers made sure that he was surrounded by a network of professionals, very qualified and fine men, lawyers, architects, you know, and uh, his networks, and he would carry him to go along with him in different places. And this opened his eyes to a greater and a higher kind of life, thereby having a higher goal and target to be able to hit. So parents, what we are saying, expose your children. You know, it reminds me, one time I think you went with your dad to Dubai? Yes. Yes, yes. they went to Dubai and I think you're going to Switzerland for your medical appointment and then you had to a stopover in Dubai. And that was a lot of exposure. You can do what you're able to afford. Let me tell you, our children will appreciate anything within the level of our own financial abilities. Um, just expose your children. It will give them a greater dream to live for. It will give them a better and a higher goal to be able to target. And then the other thing that we cannot forget is what we said in the beginning, the foundation of the faith, the foundation of the word of God. When there is that at the center of it all, then all the other desires and a proper character and walking in integrity in the things of God, and then the rest is history. God will surely make sure that our desires come to pass. Now, talk to us. As the young people look at you and uh, see you in that level of success, how did it feel to lose those kind of pleasures that other young people are actually engaged in? You honestly get to a point where you feel like you're left behind mm -hmm. and you're missing a certain experience right. in life. Mm -hmm. Also, the conversations that you have with your friends is different mm -hmm. because you want to talk about investing, you want to talk about you know, careers and things. But other people want to talk about where they had a trip, like where they went for a trip, where they took their girlfriends, where they, like how they introduce this person to their parents. Mm. And so it changes a lot and makes you feel left, like you're missing mm. some part of your life. But I definitely just went back to the drawing board and saw where I'm headed, where the goal is. And I yes. was like, I'll enjoy those things when I have the money to enjoy those things because yes. I feel like a lot of young people uh -huh. are enjoying pleasures with no money to take care of them but yeah my question is yes could you be having a girlfriend you know there are young people that are looking at you out there and you've talked about others you have sacrificed so much and uh, did you sacrifice having girlfriends or are you are able to manage and pull through with one I am not <laughs> I am not in a relationship. <laughs> I'm not in a public relationship or a secret relationship. Yes. <laughs> Neither am I looking for one anytime soon. Uh -huh. Yes. Oh, wow, wow, wow. What would you tell the young people about early relationships? Look at the bigger picture of the whole thing. Yes, this person might provide emotional security. They might provide warmth. Mm -hmm. They might provide. They might provide the things that you did not have growing mm. up. Mm. Um, I was reading something a while back, and someone said that your love language is that thing 
that was missing from your childhood. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's a lot of things that young people chase after. Mm -hmm. And my biggest advice is just know yourself, know what you want and go for that. Okay. And know that every choice has its own consequence. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there's a futuristic plan towards everything. There's a futuristic yeah. plan towards everything. I think that caught Tim, that caught Tim off guard. I know we talk <laughs> yeah. a lot, yes. <laughs> I know we talk about a lot about uh, relationships and uh, many things around in there. And talk to us about uh, what was your experience when you caught the attention of the president oh. in State House Mombasa? That, that was a life changing experience yes as i could recall my life <laughs> was not the same after that um it was definitely a testament of god's faithfulness uh -huh. um and how you know how good god is and how he always always makes a way there's this song that we've sung a hundred times plus in church of mm -hmm. how god makes a way mm -hmm. and so this particular event was evidence mm -hmm. that god is faithful is always making a way. Oh, wow. It reminds me that when it became so difficult to access uh, the president in State House Mombasa, what came to our mind is that that song by Travis Green, he made a way. And I reminded him, the God who we sing that he makes a way, he will make a way at the end of it all. And you know what? When we were seated uh, right in the crowds in there and it looked like it was difficult for us to be able to see him, well, something happened. Something happened. And all of a sudden, we were called to the front. And there we were. And thank God, the last is history. And we are so grateful for the president, uh, Kenyatta Uhuru. Thank you so much for the opportunity to grace and be able to educate our son in the U.S. I remember your words were very clear. You looked at him and you told him that it may have been hard for you to come into State House. But from now henceforth, your life has changed. And truth be told, for the four years, we thank God for you. You've been able to pay Timia's school fees and may the Lord bless you. Mm. May the Lord bless your family. May the Lord protect you from any attack of the enemy. We pray for you in this family on a daily basis. You have become part of us because of the investment that you've been able to allow God to use you even to make this a uh, reality in Timia's life. Tim, talk to us. What are the challenges that came along with this kind of a privilege of... Uh, being able to get your education from the United States? Mm -hmm. Yes. Of course, it's, it was a game changer for me, and it's definitely a blessing to study abroad. Um, but one of the challenges was the pressure to perform. Of course, the scholarship was under certain, like, there were certain, there's the terms and conditions page that people often miss mm. when they are um, applying for something. There was definitely the pressure to maintain a good GPA all four years mm -hmm. in order to keep the scholarship. There was the pressure to hit that target, a target and a mark that you set for yourself in five years. What you experience within that five years might want you to change the direction, but then there was that challenge to stay on course which was a real thing for me but mostly yeah the pressure to perform was one of the biggest challenges that i had to to face pressure to perform every blessing attracts a fee we have a saying that we say nature attracts a fee to everything that it actually offers to us and uh, one of the things that i like about tim is that uh, when he went out there he was focused and he made a decision that he will focus on the right thing that has actually taken him to the U.S. I know I've been there out of the country and I've met young people who went there for studies and because of the challenges and the pleasures and whatever is provided by that uh, kind of a community and culture, they succumb to the earthly pleasures. And Tim, my question to you as we bring this to a close, how have you been able to put a balance on your faith? and your academic achievements. Because at times, with that which we acquire in school in there, it can put you off balance on matters to do with faith. So, umedu? This a man who called and he said, cheza chini, cheza chini. So, I've learned some shame. So, umedu? It's important to remember why you're there 
and it's important to know what brought you there. And all this to say that one thing that I have tried to do is to put God first, to put God at the center of everything and to remember that he is a reason why I'm there. The degree that I'm pursuing there is for his glory to impact people through this form of expression that he has given me as a gift, you know. And so putting God first and acknowledging him in everything, literally everything, has helped me a lot. <laughs> this has helped me a lot to stay on course. Putting God at the center of everything, young people, whatever you want to acquire and achieve in life, if it's going to be sustainable, then we need to have God at the center of it. Or remember, success can only be success as it is defined in the word of God. And Joshua chapter number one, verse number eight is very clear. The true success comes from meditating upon the word of God and keeping the commandments of God, then that which we acquire in this world, we are able to enjoy it without pain and it is sustainable. I pray and hope that you've been blessed. I want to believe that it has been a blessing to you just as he's been a blessing to me. And as I told you from the beginning, if you want to get Tim talking, get him on the cameras and get him <laughs> on a mic and you will get the best out of him. He began by saying that uh, he is an introvert, but not an introvert before the cameras. So uh, would you want to give us your winding comments, even as we pray and uh, bring this to a close, what is your winding comments to the young people, to the parents, to the pastors and their kids? Talk to us. Um, to the kids, look for that one thing, that one thing that you're good at and uh, invest time in it. Invest time, work on your craft and put God first and anything can happen. To the parents, your children are your biggest investment. Your children are your biggest investment. Wow. Um, the earliest stages of any child are the most important stages when that child needs you the most. And that's when they, they don't know they need you, but they do, they really, really need you at those oh, early wow. ages. Mm. Um, because they, there comes a point where, um, they would want you, again, there's need and want, they would want you to be there, but at that point they have realized that there's some other places where they can find that one thing that was to be provided by the parent. And so, your children are your biggest investment. Stay, spend time with them. Um, and there's some things that par your children need to learn from you, from you as a father, from you as a mother, there are some stories that we want to hear from parents. We want to know how it was when you met mom, your first relationship. We want to know about your, the incidents, how much of a crazy child you were in school. We need those stories so wow. that we can better associate with you and relate with you and also be better people in the world today. And so, yeah, be a friend. You can be a father and a mother, but most importantly, be a friend to the children. Wow, wow. I didn't know that our children needed to know our crazy moments when we were young. Oh, we do. Uh, oh, my goodness. We do. I, I think you missed out on that, right? Yeah. Did we share the crazy moments? <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Uh, don't miss out to catch up with Timaeus Mulinge with a father talking on matters to do with relationships. I think that's when uh, the father will be telling the son on where we met and how we met. Uh, yes, as they, they, they do their thing, father and son thing. So God bless you so much. And thank you so much for watching. It's been a blessing to have all of you watch, uh, like, share our stream, and comment and share. Share the stream so that other young pastors, children, and uh, young people can be able to benefit uh, from what we have been able to experience at this particular time. May the Lord richly bless you. Tim, would you want to bless uh, the people of God as we bring this work close? Or are we pushing you to be a pastor? You can do the honors. <laughs> Let's pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you. We bless you. Thank you for the opportunity to be a blessing to your people. We pray, Jehovah, that as many listen to this stream, their lives will be transformed, their children will be touched, oh God. 
and my father you will restore them that are lost we give you thanks in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Timmy, as we do want to say bye. bye.